Good evening, everyone. I'm Dave Durr. I'm the interim president and CEO of the Culpeper Chamber of Commerce. I am very happy to welcome you to our annual banquet. In 1915, this organization began doing business, and since that time, we have proudly represented the business community in Culpeper. Tonight, we are happy to have you with us as we look at our year that has gone by, look at what's been successful, and we recognize some members of our business community. It should be a fun evening. It's a full agenda. I don't want to take a whole lot of your time. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our Master of Ceremonies this evening. He really needs no introduction. John Kralchek is the station manager at Culpeper Media Network. He is also the president of Culpeper Renaissance Incorporated. He's a great guy. He's very active in lots of community organizations. We're fortunate to have him here with us tonight as our MC. And John, the podium is yours. Yeah, no pressure. No pressure at all. By the way, I'm going to give you my dad's phone number. You can just go ahead and tell him all that stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the 103rd Annual Meeting and Awards Banquet. We are in for a great night tonight. Very short and sweet. I want to let you know that this is actually not an awards banquet. It is actually a recruitment event to find our new chamber president. So if you look under your seat, you'll find applications. Fill those out. Drop them with Martha on the way out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome the posting of the colors by the Culpeper County Sheriff's Department. Singing the national anthem will be Melvin White. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner Giving our invocation uh, this evening is a man who needs no introduction. He told me earlier that a few of these, few of these youngins in here don't know him. But if you don't, you better meet Mr. Ted Gore, former uh, uh, 1999 LBN Ready Award recipient and past chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ted Gore. Good evening. I looked at the program and I see that this is the 103rd meeting of this organization. And contrary to the rumors that Martha's been spreading, I was not here for that meeting. I would like to express a few thoughts before we say the blessing. 
but the place where we all live and work. I'm pleased to say that my entire life has been spent and lived here in this great community of Culpeper, Virginia. At one time, I probably was acquainted with at least half of the people in the county. My grandparents on both sides had big families. Before them were big families. Uh, I have a lot of cousins and extended family. And when we were married and Judy moved to Culpeper to be with me, she asked me one day, are you kin to everybody in Culpeper? Well, as an old Culpeper boy, I consider myself blessed to have lived here in my hometown and to have been employed by, for a long time, by a great local organization. Obviously, Culpeper is a special place to me. It is and has been made up of very special people who serve this community in so many ways. Culpeper people are very generous folks. No matter where you may have come from, and you, if you're from this place or some other place and you now live in Culpeper, there is a wonderful spirit in this community. It's a remarkable spirit. One of working together, people working together, giving of their time and resources to make this a better place. Let's bow and say the blessing. Heavenly Father, we humbly come to return thanks for the many blessings that you shower upon us each day. Thank you for the beauty of this place we call Culpeper. Thank you for the businesses, the agencies, the governmental leaders, and the community represented here at this chamber annual meeting. Thank you for the fellowship that we enjoy and for the food that we will share. We ask your blessing that we will strengthen our bodies and minds and that we will give greater service to this community and to your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. So it is, it is time for our keynote speaker and it is this, is, this introduction is going to pale in comparison to the work that this lady has done. In fact, I am honored just to be able to speak, with, speak about her tonight. Uh, Patricia Buckley was born, um, well, on May 20th. How about we just stop right there? <laughs> I'm going to read this because I don't want to mess it up. She's from New York City, and she was a second of three children in an Irish-American Sicilian marriage. In grade school, Patricia was perceived as a poor student. A circumstance probably attributed to dyslexia, which is generally misunderstood reading and perceptual disorder. Nonetheless, one of her teachers determined that this little girl who was not proficient in anything was artistically gifted, to say the least. This outside opinion helped to convince Pat's mother to enroll her uh, in the Extraordinary Public School for Girls in downtown Manhattan, the Washington Irving High School for the Fine Arts. It was there, and then moving on towards Coleman Union, I believe, where Cooper Union, I apologize, where her talent flourished tremendously. Now, since that time, this young lady has been the recipient of over 55 awards for her. I know, I counted. I'm impressed. Just to give you an idea, American Mother Artist of the Year, the Nittany Lion Award from Penn State University. She even has a day named after her in Ohio, which, by the way, is July 11th, if you want to mark your calendars. She has a citation from the White House Points of Light. She's an honorary doctor of humane letters from Bridgewater College, Cooper Union's president citation in 1996. More recently, she was a recipient of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Kinsport Champion of Youth Award in 2016 and the Distinguished Virginian Award in 2016. Her philanthropy work knows no bounds, and she's been doing amazing work for years, and all that because of her art. And she describes it and others have, as a method of communication. In fact, from, I believe, your own words, my art states in a forthright manner the ancient proposition of the triumph of beauty and truth over injustice. She seeds positive thoughts of love, family, and beauty in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my complete honor to welcome our guest speaker for this evening, Ms. P. Buckley Moss. Thank you very much, and thank you all. Thank you, uh, Chamber of Commerce. I am very honored to be here. 
I thought you'd be a, a little group and we'd have a nice little conversation. It would be fun. This is a really um, an enormous group. You do a good job and you don't need to be um, spoken to by me to tell you uh, how wonderful you are or that you need to be kind to one another or cooperative with one another. Um, I, I belong to a chamber of commerce, but it's not in any town. <clears throat> I, th I do the best I can wherever I go. So if uh, the Central Committee of the Mennonite Church asks me to do something, I do it. And if public television asks me to do something, I do it. And they're rewarded, but I'm rewarded more. Um, there are so many wonderful memories that I've had because I've said yes to everything. <clears throat> when you can uh, generate money, you're in um, demand, needless to say, because we need money for everything. And um, as he said, I failed my way through school. I failed my way through grammar school. And my mother was um, a New Yorker. She was an Italian immigrant. She came over as an infant. And um, she wanted to uh, be successful, so you would never know that my mother was Italian because she worked very hard on her language. She read and read, and she spoke beautiful English. The rest of her family all spoke broken Italian, broken English, whatever. <clears throat> but Mama was really determined. And when I could not uh, make my way in school, she said, you're going to go to the school that I went to in New York City. So I commuted an hour and a half each way to school, and I went to Washington Irving High School, where uh, they had 11 floors, and you had anything you wanted to really learn. If you wanted to learn science, you could take four periods of that a day. If you wanted to take sewing, you could take four periods of that a day. So high school was really pretty wonderful, where it could have been a nightmare for me. I had four periods of art a day. I also had an English teacher who was a saint. Um, she knew that I wasn't stupid, and she said, um, S see if your mother will let you go to movies with me. And so uh, I had to get written permission, and we went to art movies, movies that you don't see in your regular theater. We saw the most beautiful things that, were, um, that you could find in New York City. My only problem was when I got out of the theater, I never knew where I was, and I didn't read. So... I had to get into the subway and find my way to South Ferry and go over the, to uh, Staten Island. So I would get on a train going south. I knew that much. And when I got to a station that looked familiar to me from school, I'd get off the train and I'd find my way to where I uh, used to go home from school. And I'd get down to South Ferry sooner or later. And then I'd get on the ferry, travel for half an hour. Then I'd um, take the train to Great Kills where I walked over the hill and got home. Um, school to me was wonderful. Um, not high school so much as college. I learned about the Cooper Union, and God bless Peter Cooper, because Peter Cooper uh, endowed a school, endowed a college in New York City for the sciences and art. And it was that um, both were to be so closely related, and that's why he had it for the science and art. So you had engineers and artists. You had fine and graphic arts. You had advertising and all different things, and it was all free. You had your four years of college completely free. So I, felt, I feel very obliged now with 10 grandchildren who um, cannot get a free school, of course. And so uh, we have um, put, we are putting 10 grandchildren through college because I don't know what will happen to them when they get out. I don't know if there'll be jobs for them. And I don't want them to have to pay back. I could never have paid back all the money that it would have cost to send me to that very wonderful school in that wonderful city, which I don't want to go back to because it's too crowded. And it makes me very nervous. But I really love living in the country. I've always believed um, in education, even though I failed my way through school. And um, as I said, it's very important for me that all my children and grandchildren go to college if they deserve to go, and they have deserved it. They've all done very well. Um, it's, it's very important that all of us think about other children, children who don't have the money, children who don't have the parents who can afford to send them, and uh, try to help them 
we have uh, endowed scholarships and our Foundation for Children's Education endows scholarships for children with learning differences because I was a learning different person. I, I wasn't a stupid person. I wasn't a handicapped person. I was a gifted person. I was a person with dyslexia. And if you don't think that's a gift, you're very mistaken because I don't have to go and get those straight A's. I don't have to go down that same line that all you people who really are really smart get the straight A's do. I go a different way. And in going a different way, we create and we, we see different things and we, we give you different things. And so we have, uh, we have given to Virginia Tech and um, we have given to so many colleges around the country we have given uh, grants for teachers and for students. And uh, Radford College in Radford, Virginia, and uh, universities all over, all over the country. And it's been, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm getting older, and my children, uh, six of them, my girls, I have four girls and two boys. The girls have all taken over the business because I do not want to do that. I never wanted to do that. What I wanted to do was paint, and so I paint, and I work for the children now. And the children are really young, they have young ideas, and they bring young ideas to the business, and it's wonderful. And we must, um, we must give up at one, one time or another. I, I don't completely give up, I still give them an argument once in a while, you know, but it's, um, they'll tell you that I'm, I'm a tough master. But um, I really love work. And I love, um, I love working with my galleries. I still go out to galleries. I came in from a gallery last, uh, we drove five and a half hours from Ohio to come in and we will drive again uh, Saturday night. We're going to a show tomorrow. Tomorrow and Saturday we're going to a show in Leesburg. And uh, after that we'll go down. But I have a reward. I have a reward when I get back to Blacksburg. Yo-Yo Ma is playing the, at our Moss Center for the Arts, and so we have tickets, which is pretty wonderful. He's great. And so that's my reward for, for Saturday or Sunday. I really um, spend all of my time working uh, that I can. I, I do take vacations. We just came back from traveling with a few friends to Italy, and it grew from mm, 10 to 15 to 20 to 30 to 50, and it got up to 60. So we had a bus. 60 people traveling through the wine country, but we had a wonderful group of people, and we had and we traveled down to Sorrento and Pazitano, and we visited um, the ruins of all the wonderful places that we could, but mostly the vineyards are what really struck us, I think. They were very beautiful, a very beautiful time of the year and beautiful times of the day that we visited. My life is pretty, pretty good for a person who failed their way through school. And I think, um, I think that we all have to think about the children who cannot be educated. And I think we all have to help that way. I know that I speak to Rotary, too, and they're working in Africa. And I was, I was privileged to work in Africa. When I heard that um, they were, years ago, when they were, the women were starving and the children were starving and they, there was no place for them to go or no, nothing for them, um, I called the Central Committee and I said, of the Mennonite Church, and I said, um, I'd like to do an edition of prints for you that will earn you um, $100,000, a thousand prints at $100. And I said that um, oh, you take the orders, we will publicize it. You take the orders and the money, send us the orders, and we will send them out. And we did, I think we did three editions for them that way, and it really was a big help. At, at the time that I did that, a thousand dollars went a long way. And um, it just made you feel good. I did not want to go to Africa because um, I had my six kids. And I like work and I like it quiet. But uh, I went with them. And uh, they insisted I go with them. And I said, OK, we'll go. And I slept on the ground and I ate beans and cabbage for three weeks um, and traveled around on a little Suzuki, I think it was, some little thing. And we picked up people along the way, and um, people who they said were important. This is an important person. Well, it was always a native, and it was always pretty smelly. So you get nine people in a little Suzuki that's like a Jeep, and you can just barely breathe. It's really wild. But really, 
you count your blessings because they have to work very hard for water. Those little children um, traveled with buckets on their head miles. They walked miles to get water out of a little hole that the cows were tinkling in. So, you know, you, you just, you really have to help. You have to help a dig wells. You have to do that sort of thing. So that's what we did. We, um, there were some very simple well equipment that was developed, and we brought that over, and uh, we worked with that, and they had wells. And the schools over there were just fantastic. Uh, the kids came in the morning and swept the yard. They swept the whole yard with sticks. And they had very few books. There would be four kids sitting in one little desk. So this, there's always somebody you can help. There's always somebody you can help everywhere. And the important thing is um, you've got one another, and it's kind, kindness and generosity that you have among one another. You can see the friendship that you all have among one another. And just think of other people, too, sometimes, who really, really could use that help. It's, um, it's really a privilege to help people. How am I doing for time, Beck? Okay. She's timing me because I always go over. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of the time, but, uh, you know, it, it just, it's just such a privilege to know people who care and know people who can get along with one another and support one another. I was at a show last weekend, and I'm coming out with a, a new line of fabric. My daughter is a quilter, and... In order to have a vacation, I have been going on quilting cruises with her. We went to Australia, New Zealand the other day, and um, the other day, the other year, last year we went, and it was great. I, New Zealand was my bucket list. I really wanted to go there. So, um, but what I learned is that um, these people buy fabric every time they get off the ship. So I decided that I would have fabric too. So I'm coming out with a line of fabric this year. And it's, oh, it's really been fun. I'm um, coming out. Uh, and all my friends can hardly wait for the fabric to come out. But I was at a show this weekend. And a woman that I bought fabric from for years, for my daughter Mary, um, the quilter, uh, came up to the show. And she said, I was at market and I saw your fabrics. And I ordered them all. And then I went back and I ordered them all again. And she said, I am so excited about your fabrics. And the girl who was having the show works for the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, she is the Chamber of Commerce in that little town. And she said, well, I'd be more excited about you buying the fabric if you did anything with us in the chamber. And if you did of that. And I thought, oh, shoot. You can't act like that with people. You have to say, oh, thank you for coming up. And, you know, she just made, she, she crushed me saying that. Because she can't be friendly. You can't, you can't have, you can't tempt people to come in and and work with the chamber. You can't tempt them. This is a little town, so I think funds are the, are the problem. You know, some, some of the shops um, give towards the advertising and some don't. And, but you really can't you, can't, you can't, you can't speak that way to people. You really have to be kind to one another and you really have to care. You can't be jealous. You can't be envious. You just have to say, congratulations, you're doing a great job. And I love what you're doing and I love your shop and I love your shop. I love their shops. I don't quilt, but I go on these quilting cruises. They're nice people. They're really sweet people, and they help one another. And it's, it's a kind um, atmosphere to be in. But I always like getting home better in my own studio. I have five minutes left. Does anyone have a question? Five minutes. No questions. OK. Um, I have to tell you that once we asked that, and uh, a little boy got up and he said, uh, how much does that suit that your husband is wearing cost? Yeah, and you know, you, you get strange questions, so it's very, it's, it's a lot of fun when you have kids. But I always, I always spoke to kids, and I always told them, you're not stupid, and you're not dumb, and if anyone says nya 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 to you, you don't say nya 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 back. You have to feel sorry for them because you're bright enough to know that you're not stupid, and you can, uh, you can make a difference in this world. Thank you so much for listening, and for having me. My name is Sophie Hudson, and this year, hang on, let me adjust. Is that good? Okay. So this year, I've had the honor and the privilege of being the 2017 chairwoman.
So it's a pleasure to give my remarks to you tonight, my Queen's speech, if I will. Uh, and after listening to Pat's story, which thank you, Pat, for, for, for your wonderful stories, I could go off track a little bit and tell you about my own experiences with dyslexia, but that will have to be a story for another day. So I promise to keep this as short as possible. Uh, putting me up here in front of a crowd with a microphone is a really good way to keep me, my thoughts to myself. So what I want to do this year, uh, it's common that the chairman might remark on uh, how many ribbon cuttings we've had and how fabulous Culpeper Fest was. That's all true, but what I would like to do is really focus on what set this year apart from others. So what we did do was update our bylaws. Uh, I have them here. I thought it would be a really good idea if we read them. <laughs> we did actually update them. I just want you all to know that, so if anyone has any questions, they can certainly ask Chris next year. Um, <laughs> But uh, we, we've actually, as well, we've paid, up, paid off one of the loans on the chamber building. As a board, we looked at who we are. We asked ourselves, what does it mean to be the voice of the business community? How are we currently working to promote, build, and support the most effective climate for economic development? With this in mind, we have strengthened and re-energized our committees and councils and board of directors each committee and council now has its own charter in place and it's designed to give focus on our mission. Together, we've been laying the groundwork for the future of the Chamber of Commerce for the benefit of our members and the community at large. Our boards and councils and staff have given their analysis and input on our current situation and position in terms of our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and our threats. And as a board, we've come to an agreement on the key areas that we should be focusing on in the coming years that will shape our future. Well, this year, it also saw the tragic fire at the Communications Corporation of America, where hundreds in our community found themselves without jobs. The chamber was there and immediately reached out to see how we could help. We came the conduit and the point of contact to the relief efforts, and we rallied our community partners and local businesses, regardless of membership status. Ultimately, we held a job here fair, excuse me. Ultimately, we held a job fair here at Germana in conjunction with the Goodwill. And because of this, those employees were able to get back to work. That's putting food on families' tables and keeping our local economy strong. And we did this because it was the right thing to do. People often ask of the chamber, what's in it for me? Know that your chamber is in it for all of us. When you pay your dues, you're giving us the resources to fulfill our mission for the good of the community. Well, to switch gears tonight is also about thanks. And I would like to thank our 2017 board, and particularly our outgoing board members. If you're here, feel free to stand. Our outgoing members this year are Butch Davis, Keith Farish, Keith Morris, Greg Knapps, and Sanford Reeves. Thank you all so much for your service. been wonderful. Um, and thank you to the staff, the, all the committees and council members and the volunteers for your time and expertise. I wouldn't be here without you. Well, so I shouldn't make too much of a big deal about this next announcement, but I really do think it's important that you all know what an asset our interim CEO, Dave Dare, has been to this chamber. Dave I found has an excellent judgment and strong leadership skills. He's a solutions, not problems kind of approach. And he's a no-nonsense guy. He's exactly what we need right now. So come January, I think we're going to miss you. And we're going to be asking ourselves, what would Dave do? On the flip side, he calls me the boss from hell. But really, we don't know the extent of the personal sacrifices that you've both made. And we really want to thank you for the for the time you've taken to do this for us, and I think Chris has a little token of our appreciation. So when this is all done, he's got to dinner on us. Thank you. Um, so, pardon me one second. So last but not least, it's my honor and privilege to give 
the, chair, the Chairman's Award. And this award is given to an individual who, face, who facilitates the mission of the Chamber. So this has been tough. Over the years, I've seen and volunteered alongside many deserving individuals. So I hope you, I hope you like this. It's good. It's a, it's a little ironic, too, you'll see. But uh, this year, I'd like to present this award to an individual who has served our CEO search committee twice, serves the nonprofit council, is a graduate of Lee Culpepper, a program that truly interweaves a person within our community, so much so he was the bridge between the Culpepper Chamber, the community, and the aftermath of that fire at the CCA. So lastly, this person has actually revitalized and brought excuse me, viability uh, to our annual awards themselves. And this year, where is he? Marty Bywaters Baldwin. <laughs> Congratulations, Marty. Oh, don't go anywhere. Not only, not only are you getting the award this year, you have to, you know, give a, give a little something for us. <laughs> well, well, thank you. This, this is a great honor and surprise. I'm supposed to be giving the awards, not receiving them tonight. Um, but I do think the experience that, that we've had this year here with the Chamber and the community speaks a lot to each of you. Um, this is a great place, big enough with lots of resources, but small enough when tragedies happen, like the CCA, that the community can rally together and respond. Germana played, provided a free place for us to meet, and um, people, through the relationships that we built um, through the chamber and other community activities, knew how to pull together. So thank you, and, and I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Hey, everybody. Uh, the good news is it appears that you have survived a year of British rule. It also appears that the staff have declared tomorrow a second Independence Day. Thank you. What, what, what is this? It's not the Declaration of Independence? No. It's very well sealed. What is this? Oh my, everybody. Martha Sanford celebrated her 15th year at the Chamber of Commerce this year. Oh, there's more, there's more, there's more. There's more. So I think we should celebrate this 15-year this milestone with 15 reasons from the community of why we love Martha. Would you like to? You have to make it lower for me. Number one. She will always go down to the scary chamber basement for me, no matter what she's wearing. Her stash of dark chocolate-covered almonds hidden in her desk. Her kind spirit. She genuinely displays true empathy for people. She exudes class. No matter the event or how she dresses, from sweats to a ball game. She is passionate and humble all at the same time and a joy to work with. And don't forget her other stash, cream cheese and wheat thins. <laughs> her willingness to help with whatever project you are working on. Her fierce loyalty. Whether a family member, a friend, a co-worker, you know you can always count on her to be there for you to provide support. No questions asked. Look right, we made it to number 10 and it's right on cue. The fact <laughs> that you know she's totally losing it right now. <laughs> she is truly an example of the golden rule that says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. She works tirelessly to make sure this banquet and all of our events are the best they can be. Okay, the one you're waiting for, those shoes. <laughs> There is nothing that she wouldn't do for anyone in need, especially the members of the Culpeper Chamber of Commerce. Tissues up here. <clears throat> she is our oracle. Have a question? Ask Martha. Don't know someone? Martha will. If they're not kin, they're a friend. Her knowledge of the chamber and our community is an asset to our staff, board, and members, and is simply Martha, come on up here. <laughs> the 
Oh wait, there's one more surprise. led me to have a wonderful life in employment and um, help raise my children. And, uh, to thank you all very much. All right, everybody, it's my pleasure to introduce to you your 2018 chairman, Chris Pearson. I stand here tonight in awe of the changes going on in the world today. Changes both for good and for bad. One thing is for sure, change will always happen, with or without us. It is this fact that allows me to be here tonight as the incoming chairman. Good news is we, uh, we successfully transfer the power from British rule without, without any issues, so I think that's okay. And as, as John mentioned earlier, um, we're, we're making great progress at hiring the, uh, the new president and CEO, so hopefully you'll be able to, uh, to go home January 1st of 2000. 2020, maybe something like that. So I'm hoping. But in the big picture, we, we are just stewards of something greater uh, than each of us individually. And as stewards, we must preserve what we have been entrusted with, trust, entrusted with, and further that thing, that thing that we all strive for, that thing that gets us up and out of bed, that thing that turns on our lights in our shop. And in the end, we all strive for a better future, a better community and a better life for ourselves and our children. In the chamber, the collective we strives for a better future for our members, a better future for our government, and a better future for our children. Members, government, and community are the cornerstones of the chamber. Our mission is to be the voice of the business community, working to promote, build, and support the most effective climate for economic change. So how do we envision accomplishing this? I think it's through connections. The chamber connects members, through gov members to government, through business development advisory council, the state of the community, legislative breakfast, candidates forums, and ex officio seats on the board of directors, where we all get a great working relationship with our government officials. We connect members to members through women's events, lead chair, young professional group, and networking events. And if you haven't been to a chamber mixer lately, re-engage. We, all, we also connect members to the community through business expos, such as BIE Day, Career Day, Culpit Profest, and mock interviews. It is through these connections that the heart of the chamber shines through. Members value these connections. That's what we hear. But these connections are not always seen or quantifiable, but it is the ever-progressing web of connections that, that, we, that you create through your involvement in the chamber that make membership worth it. So I ask you today, what have you put forth, have you put forth the effort to make the members around you better? And, and how, how about understanding the needs and the, complexity, the complexities of government that, wrestles, that they wrestle with every day? As many of you know, I'm a CPA, so I understand the tremendous amount that you give to the government. Some probably say too much. But I, but I ask you, when's the last time you thought about the needs of the government? Our community is thriving, and we all want qualified employees. And the chamber serves a role, but the members can do more. Schools ensure that the foundation that they provide 
to our future workforce has been laid with the best footings. But their job is not to provide us with a worker that is fully trained in our unique and diverse specialty. Worker training and apprenticeship programs are needed as our jobs become more and more specialized. Speaking of training programs, the Culpeper the Chamber offers an exciting program developing new and emerging leaders in the, in the community through the LEAD Culpeper program. Applications for 2018 program are being accepted now through November 15th. I'll leave you with this, short and sweet. If we want to make a change, change for good, then I believe we as the Chamber and its members need to change the future by re-engaging our connections. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Chamber Awards 101. We're so excited that you're here. You've been nominated for a Chamber of Commerce Award. It's a big honor. You are some of Culpepper's best and brightest. And so we're glad that you're each here. Um, we wanted to prepare you for how your life is going to change being a nominee for Chamber of Commerce Award. And so we have some special etiquette that we're going to teach in this class. That's why you're here today. Um, and we have invited a special guest to come. Um, he is a world-renowned speaker, a sought-after author, and a famous lifestyle coach, Stanley Wrinkle. He's come across the country to be with you here today to give you some pointers on how to handle being a Chamber of Commerce Award nominee. Let's welcome Stanley together. Stop that, stop that, stop that, stop that. It's too loud, okay? Name's Stanley Wrinkle. I've been a licensed lifestyle coach in this tri-state area for 25 years and six months on Tuesday. Don't applaud me, please. Hey, how are we all doing today? We doing good? Yeah! yeah. Oh, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't all speak at once. One at a time, okay? One at a time. We're going to start right over here. You in the floral uh, shirt here. How's your, do how's your day going so far? My day is going well. It started off with some coffee, some news, the gym. The computer for a while, read a book for a little while, and on and on. That is just fantastic. All right, let's move on. We're gonna we're gonna snake around the room here. Uh, we'll get to everybody. You, sir, how, how is your day going so far? Uh, uh, Sam, Sam uh, uh, we, we gotta keep going. Let, let's cut to the chase here. The reason I ask is because in all things in life, it's important to know your audience. For example, my friend Mike right here. Mike is the owner of the Culpepper Vet. Uh, he has performed surgeries on over 2,000 red-winged blackbirds in our area, and 1,999 of those died. Not true. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with some background information. Um, who here can tell me uh, the definition of the Chamber of Commerce? Anybody in here? <laughs> yes. You in the back. The Chamber is the voice of the business community. We advocate, and we are the voice of the business community in Colton. False. We all know that the Chamber of Commerce is an actual, literal, underground chamber buried underneath the center of town, comprised of business owners like yourselves, all operating the black market. Uh, Just uh, um, um, Stanley, that, that's wrong. Actually, Lorraine was right. Oh, uh, okay. Well, why doesn't Lorraine just teach the class then? Why not just bring her in as the special guest speaker instead of the five-time runner-up lifestyle coach of the year? Uh, yes, you, sir, in the back. Yeah, uh, how much longer we got that, man? I'm almost done. Uh, this will be over when you stop getting nominated for awards for being outstanding and everyone loving you. So, I mean, I couldn't tell you. Like, the second he walked in, I was on my phone. I wasn't listening. I, was, I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Uh, also, gentlemen, let's talk about your appearance as you show up on the night of the event. Uh, there's no facial hair allowed in the room that night. You'll need to be cleanly shaven, okay? Down to the skin. Facial hair is for losers. Let me ask you guys uh, this. What do you guys like doing around town? Um, anyone have? Yes, you sir. Uh, Saturday mornings, I like to stroll down Davis Street and go to the farmer's market. Look around to see what people have. Okay, case in point, right there. No longer will you be able to go out in public without a disguise masking your identity. You'll need to invest in a wig. You'll also need to invest in new clothing, okay? Maybe adopt a New Jersey accent because people will be flocking from miles just to get a selfie with you. 
You will also need to make sure that you are always carrying a Pilot G2.07 pen in your pocket at all times because people will be running up to you asking for your autograph and we all know that the Pilot G2.07 pen writes smoothest on any type of paper. Well, he's very hairy. It's very difficult to see who he was, but towards the end, I got the feeling that at least he was enjoying himself, even if the audience wasn't. In the event that you should win the category that you have been nominated for, you will walk up to the stage. Without tripping, you will walk up the stairs. You will greet Marty and the devilishly handsome man that will be with him, and you will shake their hands. Three pumps. One, two. Three. You will receive a pat on the shoulder. You will then walk to the podium where you grab your award. You will then walk swiftly and abruptly off the stage as fast as you possibly can. Um, Stanley, that, that's not exactly right. We'd like to hear a few sentences from the winners about who they want to acknowledge and appreciate. Okay, I wish that information was given to me before I drove 36 miles to be here, but that is fine. So Stanley, that's all well and good, but let's talk about what happens if you lose. If you aren't selected as a winner, we want you to smile and authentically applaud for the winner in your category. Yeah, that's all uh, nice and neat, but let's be honest. When you lose, on the outside, you'll be like, but on the inside, you'll be like, son of a Because we've all, we've all been there, right? Like, we've all had those moments of like crushing defeat in front of hundreds of people before, right? Stanley, that sounds kind of personal. Is there something you want to share with us? No, no, I've, no, I've never, I've never experienced that in my life. I've always been a winner since day one, so. Who's that? Are you sure? Yeah, no, I'm positive. Okay, there's this one time. <sighs> the Lifestyle Coach of the Year Awards, 2015. I remember it like it was two years ago. The nominees were Joe Daniel, the owner of Cintas, whose name I can never remember, and myself, Stanley Wrinkle. I'll always remember being prepared, having my acceptance speech in my pocket, ready to give the familiar soliloquy of, oh, I'm, I'm not prepared, before pulling it out of my pocket and unfolding it and reading it from the crowd. And I was ready for that until, until they announced the winner. Joe Daniel. And I just remember driving home, drowning in a puddle of my own tears as they soaked into the paper cuts that I had from the paper of my acceptance speech. And it burned and it stung, kind of like the stinging in my soul. And um, the next morning I woke up and I looked at myself in the mirror and I said three words that have now become my life mantra, and I believe should become your life mantra as well. Those three words were clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. Say it with me. Clear, clear eyes, eyes, full heart, can't lose. Clear eyes, full heart, can't lose. Louder! Clear eyes! And we're happy to uh, be here. I feel more prepared after watching that video of Culpepper Chamber Awards one-on-one. -on -one. We're ready for this tonight. Yeah, and uh, we're trying to keep this thing snappy, you know. That's right. Um, we're going to keep it moving along. You, you've got, well, you're a new dad this year, right? I am a new father. How'd you know that? Uh, I, I saw some pictures online, I think. Oh, okay. Oh. How did, how did you get that? Yeah, that's my daughter. That's Kinsley. She is 16 in this picture. I'm just kidding. She's, uh, she's like seven months here. Um, yeah. Con congrats. You, and, and, you know, you're a dad too, right? Yeah, yeah. Does it? Yeah, here's Lydia. Whoa! There you go. Oh, Lydia. So That's being awesome. a dad changes things, huh? Yeah, the priorities are all different. We're we're paying for a babysitter uh, tonight, fifteen dollars uh, a minute. So they they should be in the chamber. They are they're running quite a business. They are like they're savvy. At that price point, we better keep it moving. Then. Yes, all we right. Need to, so we need to move. Let me explain to you how the awards process works. Um, one of the wonderful things about the Chamber Awards is that they recognize the best of the Culpeper business community. 
Anyone can submit a nomination and anyone can win. You don't have to be a chamber member to do either. This year, I'm proud to announce that we received 55 names from 94 different nominators. So congratulations to each of y'all that participated in nominating um, in one of our six categories. Some of you agreed on who you nominated, and there's some duplicates, so thank you to that. Um, after the nominations were received, the Chamber Awards Committee vets them, make sure that everybody goes into the right bucket. And I'd like to recognize that awards committee that promoted the awards and that vetted the nominees. Um, that awards committee is Tammy Barbosa, Aaron Simmons, and Tonda Hopkins, and myself. So thank you to that awards committee. <laughs> the, the, uh, we didn't vote, though. We passed on the awards, uh, those nominations, to the selection committee that was made up of seven members, um, some from the chamber, some from the community, and past winners, and they voted based on the criteria that you'll hear about tonight for each category. Um, 55 nominations this year is fantastic, and I think it reflects the positive things going on in the community. Hey, let's get this thing underway. What do you say? Let's give out an award, kind of. This, this first one is um, it's the Agricultural Business of the Year, and it was actually awarded during National Agricultural Week this past spring. This award recognizes a Culpeper County enterprise that is actively engaged in an agribusiness operation and successfully uses innovative practices while contributing to the health of the land and the community. And that Agricultural Business of the Year award went to Windmill Heights. <laughs> That's right. 25-year-old Paul Hutchison and his wife, Corey, own and manage eight greenhouses that produce flowers, vegetables, herbs, and hanging baskets on the outskirts of town. Continuing the business started by his grandfather, Mason, Paul Hutchison uh, provides a glimpse of Culpeper's bright future in agriculture. And since that award was given this spring, we did want to mention that because that is one of the Chamber Awards. The next one um, that we're going to unveil tonight is the Nonprofit of the Year. The Nonprofit of the Year is awarded for the organization that best demonstrates positive impact on the community, quality of service, collaboration, and partnerships. And the nominees are American Cancer Society, Northeast Region, Culpeper Housing and Shelter Services, The Culpeper, formerly known as the Baptist Home, Child Help at the Alice C. Tyler Village located in Lignum, The Culpeper Food Closet, The Culpeper Renaissance Inc., CRI. Hey, Will, do you know what Culpeper Renaissance Inc. does? Uh, no, yeah, they're, they're part of the downtown, they help out with downtown, make it really cool. That, that was new to me. You know, I, I had in mind that they put on actual renaissance fairs with like medieval garb and <laughs> Wait, jousting. Are you serious? Yeah, that's what I thought they did. Why? I'm glad to learn. Why did, what would make you think that? Weird. Well, apparently you're not uh, the only one that uh, felt that way. There's this guy, what the heck? Is that a monk? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a Benedictine monk. The Renaissance, no, that, you're in the wrong place. The Ren Renaissance Fair is that way. Yeah, yeah. Ren Fair is that way. Okay. The Renaissance Good. Fair is, is out. Keep going down Technology Drive. Hang left. Tear mark. Yeah. It's weird. Where did he even get a monk costume? That's amazing. All right. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> security. There's, there was a security guard walking around. They should get him. Other nominees for Nonprofit of the Year. Orange County Free Clinic. The Culpeper Recreation Foundation Incorporated for the Bright Spot Inclusive Playground. Safe Services to Abuse Families. And the Salvation Army. Those are the nominees. And the 2017 Nonprofit of the Year is Child Help. Child Help which at the Alice C. Tyler Village is located in Lignum. Child Help provides around-the-clock care and instruction for children, many of whom have been abused or neglected in a loving, nurturing, therapeutic environment. Give it up for Child Help one more time. Um, hi, I'm Christina Perkins. I'm the director of HR. Our executive director, Chris Rubel, couldn't be here tonight. So we are beyond excited. There's a lot of folks who don't even know about us that, you know, we're kind of hidden in Lignum. And sometimes um, what they hear is not always good things. So we are a 270-acre ranch serving abused children, children who have been tossed away, sexually abused, or neglected. As of today, we have 65 kids who are living there full time. We have staff, 207 of them, who take care of them. 
and we put up with a lot. We have kids, and I saw the sheriff's department. Um, they're runners. Um, they don't always want to be there. They have been treated so badly, so hurt, and so abused. We offer them therapy, recreation, art therapy, music therapy, spiritual therapy, and we try to mend them and put them back together. Most of the time, we're successful. And some of these children will never go back to the home they came from. They will go to foster care. They sometimes will go to shelters. We hope that they get adopted. For each and every one of us who work there, it's proud um, for us to be here. Um, so on behalf of all the employees and all the children we serve, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. All right. Next up, we have the award for Large Business of the Year. This means businesses with uh, 50 or over employees. Not age, like number of employees. Yeah, number yeah. of employees, that's right. Plenty of us, yeah, have employees that are 50 and over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this uh, business uh, embodies the Chamber's values of growth, integrity, innovation, community engagement, and workforce development. And the nominees are... Appleton Campbell. Is, is Mike Appleton in, in the room right now? Right here? Mike, I, I saw that you were nominated, and this is embarrassing, but um, the heat in my daughter's nursery has not been working, and I could not figure out why. So I cut this section of my, my duct off, and I, I brought it, and I'm hoping that you can help me understand what is going on with it. Here, hold the end there. It's like, okay. So I, I, I disconnected it, and then I realized there was stuff inside of it. So there's... Um, a roller skate, which is interesting, because her like her whole body could fit in this. She's not that big yet. There's um, there's what is there's more there's there's ductwork inside of it. There was a pink baseball bat that she, I guess, plays with. There was um, a dirty ew. I don't know what that is. And then there was a little a blankie, a little a, like she just shoved her blankie in there. Is there more? There is a onesie. There's just a lot of stuff in there, okay? And I'm just wondering if maybe you can help. So, uh, Will, this was in the nursery? I, I yeah. think we solved the problem. I don't think you need this professional advice. Oh, okay. But, well, but thank I, you anyway. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Okay, great. Thank you. For free. For free, yeah. All right. It's embarrassing. All right, moving on. So, <laughs> other nominees for large business of the year are Bingham & Taylor. Communication Corporation of America. Cedar Mountain Stone and Union Bank and Trust. Those are the nominees. And the 2017 Large Business of the Year is Cedar Mountain Stone. Come on up. Established in 1994 by Dalrymple Holding Corporation, Cedar Mountain Stone has been a major supplier of quality crushed stone and related products in the Piedmont region of Virginia. Recognized by the governor for advancing education and apprenticeships, Cedar Mountain Stone supports and volunteers at a number of local initiatives. Culpeper Air Fest, Culpeper Free Clinic, Culpeper Wellness Foundation, and Germana Community College. Cedar Mountain Stone. Um, thank you very much, sincerely, for this. Um, I just got thrown into this two days ago, so I have no idea what to say properly. Um, we love this community, and the, the employees that work with us make this company what's great today. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the next award is for the Small Business of the Year. This is awarded to the business with fewer than 50 employees, which best embodies those same chamber values. And the nominees are Action Group Incorporated, Culpeper CrossFit, Culpeper Medical Clinic, Estate Law Center, Genesis Home Improvement of Virginia. Jewel Tone Music. Coons Automotive of Culpeper. La Vida Loca. Why'd you say it like that? La Vida Loca. La Vida Loca. You know, I went down there the other day. Oh, you did? Yep. Just to see what all the buzz was about. I hear people really swarming to it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, we're going to stop there. All right. Liberty Tax Service. The Old Country Store and Bakery. Sterling Edwards Home Improvement. Randy's Flowers by Endless Creations. Walden Hall. And Wellspring Health Services. 
And the 2017 Small Business of the Year goes to Wellspring Health Services. Wellspring Health Services offers leading edge services and top quality health care close to home. They also support local events and causes, contributing free screenings and services to attendees. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone. I want to thank uh, the Chamber for uh, giving us this award. Um, honestly, I could not have been receiving this without the help of our uh, team members who are sitting here. Some of them could not attend tonight, but those of you who are here have made it possible. So thank you very much, and um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve the community. Thank you. Congratulations. The next award goes for the Entrepreneur of the Year. And this is for an individual who takes risk and demonstrates initiative in order to bring a new product or service to market. The entrepreneur must own or manage a successful business venture that has started within the past two years. And the nominees are Dr. Khalid Attar. Michael Duff with CrossFit Culpepper. Yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned uh, of Wellspring, yes. Amy Fuel, um, Homesteaders of America. Now, Homesteaders of America, this is really cool. They have, they just started, they have 1,200 members, people that are homesteading. I'm really into that kind of thing. You're into homesteading. Yeah, I love, living off the land, I love it. Living off the land. You live behind Mama May's Pizza. I, yeah. You live, what land are you living off of? So, exactly. so, so here's my proof, Will. What this is, is this? This is, this is my homesteading. It's, uh, what homemade, kind of sorcery is this? It's homemade sauerkraut. So we started red cabbage from seed in the spring. Then we harvested this fall with our garlic and oregano. And with the wonder of lactic fermentation, you have homemade sauerkraut. Is, homesteading. Is, is Amy, where's Amy? Raise your hand, Amy. Are you around? Amy Fuel, anyone? Bueller? Okay. Not here. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to fact check that. But. All right. Moving and, on. And our next nominee for Entrepreneur of the Year is Ross Williams with Let's Get Better Basketball Training. It so smells. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It does. And the, tw the 2017 Entrepreneur of the Year is Dr. Khalid Attar. Thank you again, everyone. Um, I would like to say a few more extra words about this award. Um, I really am not an entrepreneur. I'm just another dreamer like any one of you. But I have really good friends and family that have supported me to get to where I am today. Um, it has been an interesting journey, and uh, I'm very fortunate and blessed to have all of my colleagues and friends who have uh, entrusted their faith and trust in me and the vision and um, have allowed me to um, get this award. Um, a few years ago, I read somewhere, and that quote just stuck to my mind. Um, it said that when uh, somebody wrote that, as an entrepreneur, I sleep like a baby. I wake up every two hours crying, looking for mommy. <laughs> and, and that probably is the life of, of an entrepreneur. So thank you very much. Right. Next up, we have the award for Young Professional of the Year for a local professional under the age of 40 demonstrating excellence, innovation, and character while making an impact on the community. And the nominees are Ashley Carter, Administrative Director of Culpeper Medical Center. Ian Keeney, DJ with INL's Media. Japricia Clark with Nest Realty. Matthew Corbin, owner of Captain Corbin's Seafood and Baby Jim Snack Bar. Sarah Drevis with Rappahannock Goodwill Industries. John Fisher, Realtor with Exit Cornerstone Realty. Tyler Coons, the manager of Coons Automotive of Culpeper. Kyle Linsky, Financial Advisor with Edward Jones. Will Orr, Area Director, Culpeper Young Life. Is this a joke? No. Oh. Rebecca Ramsey, Branch Manager of Farm Credit of the Virginias. And the 2017 Young Professional of the Year Award goes to Sarah Drebus. Wrap hand at Goodwill. As the WIA Youth Case Manager for Wrap hand at Goodwill, Sarah has helped 88 young people find jobs in the past two years. She co-founded the Groundwork Project in conjunction with Verdun Adventure Bound this year, and she is compassionate and thoughtful. 
and working with young adults who face barriers to their career goals. She also volunteers on the committee for Culpeper Young Lives and on the steering committee for mock interviews with career partners. Sarah Drews. Wow. Um, thank you all. Um, I'm really honored and surprised and encouraged to be up here right now in front of you. Um, I've been blessed to work with many of you in the room. Um, through my work at Rappahannock Goodwill, I partner with a lot of you to help youth find jobs or training in the area. Um, Donnie Tolson and Marty um, is our center manager. Donnie is our CEO. And then um, Joanne here is also our grant writer. And all of them have helped um, this year with us getting a new project, the Groundwork Project, um, which we've partnered with um, for Dunn Adventure Bound. And so we're taking some of the youth from Culpeper and Fauquier counties out there once a week um, for eight weeks at a time where they get um, career training and outdoor leadership skills. Um, so it's been a really fun new project um, that it's been a team effort. So I feel honored to be up here getting the award um, and I thank all of them and all of you and the chamber and thank you very much. <laughs> all right, now for the moment you've all been waiting for. This is the Chamber's highest award, the L.B. Henready Award, recognizing significant contribution, contributions to society and stellar work in the community. And the nominees are? We have 10 nominees this year, which is outstanding. So we're going to take a minute and read a couple sentences, a bio of each one, so that you can appreciate the depth of, of community members that we have. First nominee is Charles D. Barrell. Along with, this, with serving as a managing partner of the law firm, Charlie has served as the co-chair of the Library Foundation, which raised money to build the new facility. He what? served as... Hold on, what's happening? Stanley, what? We have to hurry oh, up? Okay. Gotta, okay. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Stanley. We'll, we'll, Thanks, we'll do Stanley. It. Thanks. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. How did he get in here? Someone, gosh, escort him out. Security. So Charlie has served as the co-chair of the Library Foundation, raising money to build the new facility. He served as the president of the Culpeper Recreation Foundation for 15 years, and he's on the board of directors for the Novant UVA Culpeper Medical Center as well as the Culpeper Wellness Foundation. Reverend Ludwell Brown has pastored Mount Calvary Baptist Church for 24 years. Is a retired Sergeant Major, has served on the Culpeper Human Services Board for 14 years, and is the past president of the NAACP Culpeper Branch. He's on the board for the Culpeper Heat Shelter and Wayland Blue Ridge Baptist Association. He also works as a senior guardian, assisting individuals without family support in making sure that their end-of-life wishes and legacy are carried out. Michael Dale. Upon retirement as head of Jaguar North America, Mike has absorbed himself in the Culpeper community, founding the Culpeper Air Fest, and along with Chuck Jury and others, serving as a founding member of Career Partners, a business education partnership with Culpeper County Schools, which runs E-Squared, Mock Interviews, Career Expo, and the brand new Maker Energy Fair. Ed and Kathy Dalrymple. Because of their undivided partnership in the community, Ed and Kathy are actually being uh, co-nominated. Along with their successful business, the Dalrymples are community leaders, providing leadership and volunteer hours to the Culpeper Air Fest, the Culpeper Free Clinic, the Wellness Foundation, and Germana Community College. Marilyn Dunphy. Marilyn is a quintessential community building volunteer. She tutors ESOL on Mondays with the Culpeper Literacy Council coaches heart and soul with Girls on the Run on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and has planned the Culpeper Fiesta for the past 14 years. Pastor Bradley Hales. Pastor Brad is a tremendous mentor to young and old alike. He is always prepared with an encouraging word and your name committed to memory. Pastor Brad is a community pillar, serving on the board for Culpeper Human Services, founding The Place, drop-in center for seniors, and overseeing Reformation Lutherans move to a new and renovated worship center this year. Brandon Miles Harris. <laughs> Brandon is a Culpeper grad who chose to use his extensive entrepreneur skills to open a business, sneaker thrifts, in the Culpeper area. His shop is always open to the public, and he works with community organizers in town to create positive programs for kids. He's also faced the adversity of two business break-ins with resiliency and perseverance. David M. Jones. For 32 years, David has made Culpeper home, serving on a variety of boards and volunteer organizations, including Culpeper Wellness Foundation, CDAC, and the George Washington Carver Agricultural Research Center. 
He's also a founding member of the Culpeper Football Association and advocates for youth participation in sports to counteract the drug epidemic. John Russell. John is a town councilman, serves as the national director of the American City County Exchange, is on the advisory council for the Salvation Army. He also volunteers as troop master for Trail Life USA. Joseph A. Tony Troilo, Jr. Tony is the president of Rawson and Troilo Motor Company of Brandy Station, serving in this capacity for the past 37 years. He is married to Patricia and has four kids and seven grandkids. Tony is the president and founder of the Piedmont Area Soapbox Derby Foundation, and his vision and leadership helped create the 15-acre Soapbox Derby facility debt-free. And this year we have a special video courtesy Culpeper Media Network, a brief video about this year's Henretti Award winner. If you were to ask Tony what his greatest success has been, is by far marrying his wife, Pat. Pat is his strength. She is his sounding board. He functions, he does, because of love of family. And she is right there with him, with, with God, family, and community. So thank you, Pat. No one worked harder than Tony worked and he, uh, he led exactly by example. One of, the thing, one of the things I really remember about Tony is when he first would come in in the morning, his first duty was to go and speak to each and every employee before he took to tackle the day's problems. He made sure he greeted each and every one of his employees. And it, uh, you know, that went a long way. Everybody thought the world of Tony as they worked for him. That's why he had people work so long and many, many years for, for, um, for him and his dad. Tony takes the foundation that mom and dad has given him and he uses those priorities with God, family, community, country, and he helps everyone grow. He realizes that our community is only as strong as our weakest link. And in Tony's mind, so I believe, if he can do the least little bit to strengthen that wink link, then we're all so much better for it. You don't always know about it, but he's going to work hard to do what he can to support it. And I think, I know, that's what makes our community so special. And it's what makes him so special. I know a couple people who needed firewood, had no money to get firewood, you know, in the wintertime. Tony would deliver the firewood. And he would deliver the firewood without telling them anything. He would, uh, people who, who needed uh, down on the luck and needed the little money to pay a utility, get some groceries, feed the kids. Tony would do it. You never heard about it. We heard it from somewhere else. You never heard it from Tony. But it, uh, you know, I know he was doing it. And he continues that today. Tony is deserving of this award because of his life journey. What he started in business and what he's done for the community, what he's done for the Brandy Station Fire Department, the department as a whole in our community, the Soapbox Derby, and various other things that he's been involved with. It's been an evolution. Tony wasn't striving for an award, didn't know the true direction he was going in. He was just going in the right direction, and he always has been. And through that love of community and family and reaching out to people, he's provided guidance for a lot of other people in the community that look up to him and the family and want to be part of that. Maybe not to mimic or recreate in their own way, but to follow. He's a true leader. And perhaps that's the greatest impact and something that he will also maybe look back on and realize that that was part of the journey. Ladies and gentlemen, Give it up for your 2017 L.B. Henretti Memorial Outstanding Award Citizen of the Year, Tony Troilo. Come on up, Tony. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Martha, I'm not even supposed to be here tonight. <laughs> Let's think about this. 
I got a call last week. This is unbelievable. I cannot believe this. You don't do things in this community to get rewarded like this. But I got a call. I would, Pat and I were having her, her birthday, and I got this note that says, congratulations, you received the nomination. And I looked at it, and I told Pat a month ago, I said, can you believe this? I am not going to be at the chamber banquet. I get this message, and I call Martha right then. I said, Martha, you're not going to believe this. But I said, if any of you have ever dealt with the VA, you just don't get an appointment and call them and counsel it. Well, I got this appointment back in September, and it was November the 2nd. God, i got to get my wits here. I called her and said, I can't be there. Well, I turned around and told Pat what had happened. And she said, you can't. you got to go. And I said, yes, i got to go. But I said, how in the world am I going to get this? How am I going to get this visit changed? And I, uh, the next day I got on the phone after numerous hang-ups. After standing on hold, I finally got my appointment at the VA changed. And we're trying to figure out. Why, how I can walk, talk, and think at the same time, but I think they're going to forget about all about that because I don't think it's going to work. So anyhow, we got to change, and here I am tonight. And I don't know. I, I just, uh, I'm sure my wife is sitting back here saying, Tony, these people have got to go home tonight, so shut up quick. But I, I was thinking, LB and Reddy, what an award. This man was a very special person, very special person in this community. Uh, I had the privilege, and there's not a lot of people in this room. I know Butch Davies is here because he's my elder. And, and Ted Gore, you, what I wanted to probably say, what I was thinking of walking up here, you already said, so my father came here because he thought it was the greatest place in the world. He moved here from Italy, but it is a fantastic place to live and be part of. But anyhow, in 19... 69, uh, my wife went to work for the Planning Commission. And you know how dogs chase cars? Well, I was chasing her, and I'm still chasing her today. But she worked at the Planning Commission, and I, I would go into the Planning Commission to see her every time I possibly could to get a kiss or say or just look at her, and invariably, this gentleman would always pop out of the corner, and it was Mr. Henretti. Little did I know that he worked in that building in the old Methodist church at the end of Davis Street with the soil conservation water. I could have used that man six years ago, but that's over. That's another story. <laughs> but every time I'd go in to see Pat, he would walk in. And this was in 69, and I guess he thought, you know, what are you doing here? So I... I got to know Mr. Henready, but I knew Mr. Henready because he was a competitor. Only reason I knew him because he was a Firestone dealer and we were the Goodyear Unroll dealer, so I knew Henready. But I didn't know him other than he was that competitor. So I really got to know him a little bit. Every time I'd walk in that office, he'd see me, and I saw him two or three times a day because I'd always sneak in and try to get a kiss from that girl. But anyhow, as time went on, uh, 1971, and I think, Martha, I made a mistake. This is probably the first, I said this will, will be the first one I never was here. But in 1975, the year Mr. Henry died, I was not here. I was in the hospital. I decided to see how strong and how long I could stay up with that sleeping. And, and yeah, that's another story. But I wasn't here in 75. That was the year he passed away. But in 1971, when this award was created, and I believe Mr. Martin received the first L.B. Henry Award, uh, we were at the firehouse in Culpeper, which that was the only place you could meet in Culpeper at that time. And I'll never forget walking up to him, congratulating him. My dad said something to me about this community owes this man indebted to him for the years and years to come. And I thought, okay, that's fine. 21 years old, I didn't know any different. But I thought, this guy's pretty good because he did tell me one thing. He said, you got good taste because you're chasing that girl. But I really got to know Mr. Henry a little bit more when my brother-in-law moved to this community. And why I'm saying this and why I'm talking about it, because this, I was thinking about this today. Of God, you know, this is fantastic. I can't believe it. But coming up a road thinking about L.B. Henry and what he did for this community. And I had to reminisce a little bit. But 
when he, when my brother-in-law came here in the early 70s with the hospital, I got to know LB. And I get, and I say LB because one night he looked at me and he says, "Why don't you call me LB?" And there was three gentlemen in this community that I remember: George Beard, Pete Davies, and LB Henry. Told me to call them by that name, first name. And I said, Dad, that's a little weird for me. And he says, you've got their respect and don't ever lose it because you are special and they respect you. So don't ever lose that. Remember that. And I think, God, that's fantastic. So, but I realized what LB was doing and what he was doing for the hospital, what his wife was doing. However, it really didn't set in until the mid-'80s what L.B. Henretti really meant to this community. And to be included in this class of past recipients, it is fantastic, unbelievable. But L.B. had an impact, and a lot of people don't know what he actually did. And I want to share this. But in the mid-'80s, Zeus Clore, and I believe Zeus was a past recipient of this award, made a phone call to my dad. And he said, we got a problem over in Orange. It's a drought, and they need water. And he said, do you think the fire department Brandy can take water over to Orange? Dad said, can you take water? He said, I got another job for you. I said, Dad, that's, that's nothing unusual. What do you want me now? So I transported water to Orange and put it into a railroad tank car. And I think I did that for three days. Now, I'll tell you what, that's like putting a gallon of water in a bathtub. But that's how much water we haul. Well, Transporting that water, I really realized in the mid-'80s, every day we turn the water on in this community, LB and Reddy should be thanked for what he did because we've never, ever had a problem of drought in this community. He had the foresight, and the leaders of this community honored him by naming this award because we today can live with never worrying about having a water problem and being from the fire department and the major fires that we've had in this community, LB and Reddy means a lot to me, especially with what he has done for Culpeper and where we're going to go. And the people that move here do not realize that what he did for us in the watershed, the Mountain Run Lake, back in the 60s, so that we today can live without the fear of having a drought in this community. And for me to receive this award and to join the other individuals and men and women previously in years. It is truly an honor and a humble experience. I thank God. I thank my wife and my family, and I thank this community, the chamber, for bestowing this honor on me tonight. This is unbelievable. The hub of America right here in Virginia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the meeting has come to a close. I thank you all for attending and being a part of the chamber and being a wonderful part of our community. I hope you continue to go out and be the best that Pixel Culpepper has to offer. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great evening.